Today is going to be both educational and fun. I posted in the community tab here on YouTube, as well as in my Instagram stories, asking you what questions do you have for me in an Ask Me Anything. And boy, did you deliver. If you wanna see if your question got answered, stay tuned. Quick camera switch there. If you're thinking, Chels, I missed the question box and I still have questions for you, you can leave them in the comments. I do gather them for future and upcoming Q&A videos, but I think the best bet is that you make sure you're subscribed here and a gold star if you have the little bell icon on, so that way anytime I post, no matter if it's a video, a short, or even in the community tab, you are going to get notified and you should be following on Instagram, right? I post there almost every day and I try to make my content there very much like this video where it's a comment combination of edutainment. If you're new here, hi, I'm Chelsea. I am a VSG patient of almost five years. My surge anniversary is next month. And I'm also a bariatric support coach for women who are looking for any type of support, both pre and post op. I've managed to maintain an almost 100 pound weight loss since surgery. And I want to show you what real life looks like after surgery. This is all about developing that lifestyle. Let's get to the questions, shall we? I will pop them up on the screen here as well. Vitamins post op. How many do you need? I love that we're getting down to the succinctness of this right away. Also, hey girl, hey Danny. Because this is not always a one size fits all answer, I did do an entire dedicated video on vitamins and supplements. And I will link that here as well as leave it in the description box as a resource. But I do have some general guidelines that anyone who's having weight loss surgery can follow. Overall, you need four-ish. <laughs> this includes a daily multivitamin, and in my vitamin video breakdown, I share with you exactly what you need in that multi and how much of it you need. You also need a calcium or a calcium citrate. Calcium citrate is safer for people who have had kidney stones, which is something I experienced when I was pregnant, so I take a citrate. You need B12. That's going to help with your energy levels. And my clinic recommends also vitamin D, which is kind of generally recommended anyway. Now there are bariatric vitamins that have all of this goodness packed into one efficient little pill. But the caveat is that at least for me, it feels really heavy when I take it and it makes me nauseous. I have tried taking it after my morning protein and after my breakfast. I've tried taking it at night with dinner. And no matter when I take it, I know that I'm in for about 20 minutes of nausea before my stomach settles down. So I know it's not permanent, but I would rather just not experience that nausea at all. So I continue to take like individual vitamins after trying a bunch of different one pill for everything bariatric vitamin. I'm also gonna add in a few here that are not prescribed per se by weight loss clinics, but that I personally think are beneficial to you pre and post op. Disclaimer, I'm not a medical expert. I'm just someone who has had this lived experience and I've gotten to work with hundreds of women and one good men. And I think in general, this advice is sound, but please do what's best for you medically. We're gonna start with the beauties of collagen and biotin. These two are intended for keeping your hair, skin, and nail game strong. And while you're going to lose hair, you can prevent that massive loss, that huge shred with biotin and collagen, or one or the other, depending on what you like. I will insert clips of the ones that I've been trying lately. I do not have a sponsorship with either of these products, but they're the ones that I've been testing out because I tend to rotate through bottles quickly to see what's gonna work best for me. And at night, I take an ashwagandha pill with a magnesium to help me stay asleep. The ashwagandha combined with the magnesium just helps my body kind of go into like sleepyostasis. It's not as aggressive as melatonin. It is something that your body naturally produces, but I think this helps me like calm before I go to sleep so I can stay asleep longer. Question number two. Some days it's hard to know when I've had enough to eat. How do you feel 
when it's enough. Thank you for asking this. My assumption is that you are in the very beginning post-op phases. Maybe you've worked through liquid and you're in maintenance mode now, but you're still at those beginning months because I will tell you that almost five years out, I do not have the problem with, is this enough? I do have some follow-up questions for you. Are you eating three to five small protein dense meals a day? And are you tracking your protein ever? It doesn't mean all the time, but like regularly. I think you'd be surprised, and I know people are surprised who have not had bariatric surgery or any experience with it, about how you can survive on such little quantities of food, but you actually do need to eat to lose weight. I want to make sure that you're not under eating. Under eating can cause stalls because what happens is that your body really holds on to every nutrient coming into it because essentially you're putting your body in starvation mode. I know it feels ironic to say that under eating will cause you to not lose weight, but that's how it works post-op. If you were also under eating, you would likely have zero energy and you would probably feel bad. You would feel exhausted, you would feel cloudy in your brain, you would feel sluggish, and your stomach would probably hurt. If any of these are the case, it's a simple fix. You just need to increase your caloric intake. Remember, protein first. If you are eating three to five small meals a day and they're protein first, if you are tracking your protein and you're getting the numbers into the 60s, you're definitely eating enough even if you're not eating large quantities at one time because that's kind of how the surgery works. And if you are looking for a little assistance to figure out what menu items could really up your protein game? How do you sneak in extra grams of protein when you can't really sneak in more meals? I have a freebie tool down below that maximizes your protein through the use of AI. So that will make sense when you open it. If you are familiar with like ChatGPT or any of your favorite AI platforms, this is a way to leverage technology to have a better post-op menu. This did not exist when I was having surgery, so I love this tool now. It's free and in the description box. What are your three must-haves for the hospital post-op? Veronica, I love this question. How fun. I'm actually planning to do a video in the month of June about how to set up a surgery recovery station at home. Make sure you're subscribed for that. I was recently talking to my clients about packing their hospital bag. And it turns out that in no surprise to anyone, I'm an overpacker. So I'm going to give you three things that I think you need and you can bring these to the hospital with you or you can have them waiting for you at home. Number one, hands down, is a protein shake that you know you love and can stand for the rest of time. Yes, your protein shakes flavors may change with your own taste buds, but I have had a chocolate fair life 26 gram protein shake at least one a day for five years. I really should have stock in this company. This is the one that didn't hurt me post-op right away. It was palatable. I never gagged while drinking it and the protein sits well in my system. Number two, is a bougie bathrobe and grippy slippers. I think this is a necessary must have for the hospital because when you go back to your room, you're gonna be in your Johnny post-surgery and then to feel like a real person and maybe not have the back of the Johnny just floating open when you need to get up, take walks and go to the bathroom, you could have a really comfy robe that feels home-like and cozy to you. Grippy slippers, I do love a good pair of hospital socks, but I think like grippy slippers are cuter and you know they're gonna be clean when your feet are going into them. And then you can wash them when you come home from the hospital, put that all into the laundry, and then re-wear it while you're recuperating. Like no matter the weather, I had surgery in July, I just wanna be snuggled and cozy when I'm in pain or discomfort and I'm recovering. It helps me get into like mental rest mode, if that makes sense. Number three is a backlog of my favorite TV shows, my comfort shows and movies, because you want to distract yourself 
post-op right away. So in the hospital, I got lucky and there was a Sex in the City marathon on the TV and watching that and being able to time out the episodes with the water I was supposed to sip and the broth that I was sipping helped distract me from the tightness in my chest. That was my number one pain, it was not my incisions. It was all of the gas that they pumped in during surgery. So within those first 24 hours, I kind of just really engaged myself in the joys of Sarah Jessica Parker and it helped distract me. So if you have a tablet or a laptop, even your phone, like download things you know you love or that you've been waiting to watch so that way you have this visual distraction. I would never offer technology as a distraction to numb your everyday life. However, I think for this purpose, it helps get you through those hardest first hours. How long was it before your eyes, brain, caught up with how your body actually looks? Oh, the body dysmorphia question. Body dysmorphic disorder is very real post-op because of the rate you are losing weight. You're losing weight likely more quickly than you ever have in your entire life. And if you're anything like me, I was overweight for a very long time. So my eyes and my brain had a hard time processing what it was seeing in the mirror for weight loss. So this alignment can happen a little bit faster if you do a few things. One is to take the progress photo. I recommend doing this in like little shorts and a sports bra or a bathing suit. Like you wanna take this from the front angle, from the back, from the sides. You want to see your progress month to month. And I wouldn't do anything longer than that. If anything, I would go like in shorter increments because you will see progress. But if you are constantly reviewing those photos, especially from the before photo that you need, I think you will be able to recognize what you're seeing in the mirror faster. I also found that trying on clothes in person made a big difference. Now, I went into surgery right before COVID, so I didn't really have the opportunity to go into stores the entire time that I was losing rapid amounts of weight. But in the beginning, it helped me go into a store, know what size I was, and then try pants on that buttoned to see, okay, am I decreasing in size? What do these jeans look like on me? And an entirely separate video is about how women's clothing sizes range so drastically from whoever is creating it and that there's definitely like a fat tax on overweight clothes. Whole separate topic because we're not suggesting here that all like size 12s are going to be the same at every retailer. Absolutely not. It's even, un it's even likely that size 12s at that same retailer in different cuts of jeans run differently too. So I'm not trying to say sizes are made equal. They aren't. However, going somewhere where you know you've worn the clothes and then trying on something in a size that's probably too big for you, that's what you're gonna reach for first is my guess, and then realizing, oh, I'm down a size from that, that can help with the reality check of what does my body look like. It doesn't mean you need to buy anything, but I think the act of trying on clothes in person, in a retail store, in the mirror is helpful where you have access to a bunch of sizes at once. And my last suggestion here is a strategy that I do and I recommend to my clients, but it is the hardest one. It's the Nike game. Working your way up from three to five minutes and you can start with 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you're comfortable with. You need to, in a full length mirror, look at your naked body regularly. Every day, if not every day, three plus times a week. This is like a meditative moment, not for you to be judgy about what you're seeing, but to look for where are the areas of change, of progress, what am I seeing? Because BDD is a mental health issue, it's not physical. It exists in our minds when we can't recognize the truth about what lies in the mirror. So most people who have had a disordered eating past experience some type of BDD. Um, I once went to a therapist for my own 
disordered eating and she asked me to, on a long sheet of paper, create a silhouette of my body. And then she had me lay down on top of the silhouette and she traced me. And even though at the time I was roughly 220, 230 pounds, I still drew myself way larger than I actually was. So this is real, knowing it's mental health related and that there are steps that you can kind of use these strategies to like align your brain and your body together would be helpful. I've also done an entire video dedicated to body dysmorphic disorder and I will link that here for you too. This one came from YouTube. What are your go-to indulgent snacks? Ooh, this is a good one because I do love a snack. So when I want a snack, and I love them, I'm a snacky girl, I want it to feel like the snack is helping me reach my goal. The non-negotiable is that whatever I'm eating has to be worth my bites. An easy, homemade, no cook option here because when we're hungry for a snack, we usually don't wanna go through the process of cooking or creating something, is basically anything with peanut butter. So we love celery, we love apples. I like to put little chocolate, like mini chocolate chips, dark chocolate chips on the celery for a little version of like ants on a log. And I use peanut butter as an ingredient in my protein balls. So having around a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of peanut butter can range from like seven to 11 grams of protein just in that one snack. I also love the Trader Joe's hummus with the unexpected, it's called unexpected cheddar cheese from Trader Joe's. That combination where you like, there's like very, there's not a carb here, right? There's not a cracker. I'm using the cheese to get the hummus out that is delicious. It's like on my top two snacks of all time. I also turn to easy alternatives like coconut covered almonds. Those are so good. They're like just the right amount of sweet, not too sweet. I love, love my Cocoa Puff edition of my Magic Spoon cereal with milk. That feels like such a sweet treat at night, like as an after dinner snack but I love it and I'm getting like 11 to 17 grams of protein with a cup of that cereal and milk. This one depends on the time of day, the time of year, a lot of things, but honestly, a great snack is wine. A chilled, delicious glass of rosé or champagne could be the perfect snack for me. However, in order for me to fulfill that as a snack credit, Disney friends, I need to make sure that my protein has been maxed out for the day and that I am extra hydrated, like talking 90 ounces of water hydrated. I don't just turn to a glass of wine at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and think, this is a great snack. I'm talking about like on the weekends, in the summertime months, you know, socially, etc. But I need to make sure I've prepped for that first. Maybe not the right type of question, but when does the next round of coaching or your course happen? Well, thank you for asking. Right now, I am plumb in the middle of my Royals group, my coronation post-op small group. We are quite literally directly in the middle of that. My digital course, which is called Mindset Mastery, which is a four-week mindset-driven tactile, hands-on, let's get through some stuff type of course, that is going to reopen in July. So around mid-July. And I will be making content kind of around promoting that course. But if you want more information, leave it in the description box below. I have a wait list also in the description box. So typically the wait list is like the first to know because I do only take a small group of VI Pixies, that track of the course gets four live workshop trainings with me. So there's an independent study too, that is endless, anyone can do that, but the Pixie part, that's with me, so I try to keep that smaller. So if you're interested, make sure you're on the wait list for upcoming information, it will be linked in the description box. And the last question today is, when will your sister be back? And then she said, I loved watching you two together. Well, thank you, that's so nice. And the feedback around Mallory and I, Mallory's my sister, um, doing that New York City vlog together was 
so kind. So thank you for your wonderful, sweet comments on that. I showed them all to her. She was excited. So she's coming back. She'll probably be back next month. We're thinking of calling a series like with the two of us together, like bariatric besties because we wanted to call it something else, which if you watch the New York City vlog, you know what that answer is, um, but that's not appropriate for YouTube, so we can't really do that, but wouldn't it be fun for the two of us to like sit down together, have a glass of wine, and talk about all things weight loss surgery? Personally, I think that sounds like a hoot. Would you be into a bariatric besties wine chit chat? Let me know. Before we sign off together, my darling, I just wanted to remind you that in the description box, and there's a little like that you can click to expand. We're going to have the AI protein freebie down there. There are video resources linked to all of my discount codes as well as the wait list for Mindset Mastery. So there's a lot going on in that description box. I put a lot of time into curating it with resources that I think will be beneficial for you. So make sure you check that out. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. You bring such a joy and light to my life. I deeply appreciate your questions and I can't wait to see what questions you come up with for the Berryversary video next month too. I will see you same time, same place next week. I love you. Bye friends.